It's not easy making an action game. Retaining a player's interest over the hours is tough enough. Forget making an experience that will appeal to as many people as possible. Because of this, a number of titles in the genre tend to fall by the wayside. Let's take a look at 15 underappreciated action games throughout the years and what made them so special. Gravity Rush 2 there's some insane creativity at SIE Japan Studio, and that's no more apparent than in Gravity Rush 2. Developed by the Team Gravity Division, the world is larger, livelier, and more destructible than its predecessor. But it's the sheer imagination in gravity-defying encounters to exploring Cat's mysterious backstory that lent the game its own unique charm. Despite good reviews and the developer's pedigree, Gravity Rush 2 averaged roughly 103,000 copies in Japan during its launch month. Its online service was subsequently discontinued in July 2018. MAG 2010 before 100-player battle royale games with squads of multiple players, there was MAG in 2010. Zipper Interactive's ambitious online shooter packed up to 256 players together along with multiple classes, a ranking system for organized squads and platoons, and several objective-based game modes. The usual bugs and balance issues aside, it was an incredibly ambitious title at the time and was even recognized by Guinness World Records for having the most players in a console FPS. However, Zipper Interactive would be shuttered in 2012, and MAG went offline in 2014. Mirror's Edge We've said it before and we'll keep saying it for a good long while. Mirror's Edge was extremely underappreciated, especially given what it achieved at the time. It was a first-person action platformer which simulated parkour across massive rooftops and did so while presenting some genuinely great missions and stunning aesthetics. Moreover, it did this back in 2008 on previous generation consoles. Despite this, Mirror's Edge only managed to sell 1 million units as of February 2009, falling well short of EA's projections. It did receive a sequel, but suffice it to say that Mirror's Edge Catalyst just didn't feel the same. Echo 2017 Imagine being trapped in an ornate palace with numerous copies or echoes of yourself running around. When the lights are on, your every action is recorded and taught to these echoes. Only a brief blackout provides true respite. This was the premise of Ultra Ultra's stealth action title Echo, which saw protagonist N struggling to survive against an adaptive AI that could learn her moves. Echo received decent praise when it launched in September 2017 for PS4 and PC, but failed to really achieve much success, leading to the studio shutting down shortly after. Deadhead Fred the PlayStation Portable has its fair share of underappreciated games, but Vicious Cycle Software's Deadhead Fred is perhaps its weirdest. You play as decapitated private investigator Fred, who explores the circumstances surrounding his recent murder. Fred can switch heads and utilize different abilities in the process. That's the basic premise, but it's wrapped up in a detective noir-style presentation. Again, sales were nothing special and reviews were average at best, but at least the game's writing was recognized by the Writers Guild of America in 2007. Hybrid so, a source engine-developed third-person multiplayer shooter published by Microsoft and developed by Fifth Cell of Scribblenauts fame? That's Hybrid, which emphasized competitive play but in the sense of racing against an enemy faction to obtain dark matter. Utilizing cover, jetpacks, killstreak-style drones, and more, Hybrid quite literally sounds like a hybrid of really weird ideas, but somehow makes them work. It received average reviews overall and was quickly forgotten. Super Daryl Deluxe Inspired by Napoleon Dynamite, Super Daryl Deluxe sees the new kid Daryl joining a school where multiple dimensions collide. As the story gets going, players will battle all kinds of monstrosities in a beat-em-up style RPG with multiple special abilities. The gameplay sounds simple, but the art style, irreverent writing, and oddball characters make it a worthwhile experience. And with just 123 user reviews on Steam since launching in April 2018, it's perhaps one of the most underrated games out there. Deadly Premonition 
Of course, if you're talking about oddball masterpieces, then Swery 65's Deadly Premonition is close to the top. This mind-bending, unorthodox thriller was fairly polarizing back in the day due to its combat and strange mashup of genres. Nevertheless, despite its underwhelming production visuals and review scores, Deadly Premonition developed a strong cult following which endures to this day. We'll see if that's rewarded when Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise, arrives. House of the Dead Overkill Light gun shooters are a lost art, especially as arcades have been relegated to the past. They struggled to find an audience even back in 2009, but that didn't stop Sega from releasing House of the Dead Overkill, a kitschy, action-based follow-up that had a surprising amount of humor, some good, some bad, to go with the blood and gore. It scored decent reviews and sold about 45,000 units in its launch month in the United States. Not the best numbers, but Sega of America felt it met expectations all the same. Warhammer 40k Space Marine while everyone was still trying to make the next big third-person cover-based shooter hit, Warhammer 40k Space Marines simplified things. You gunned orcs from a distance, but also engaged in melee combat. Executing foes with the latter would restore health, leading to this satisfying rhythm of shooting and slashing. The overall pacing also felt great, even if players explored the Forge World Greya in relatively linear fashion. Unfortunately, Warhammer 40k Space Marine failed to really ignite sales charts. Stuntman Ignition Though a racing game at heart, Stuntman Ignition is all about the thrills and perils of being a stunt car driver. Racing through a number of different scenes, players will go from escaping a volcanic eruption to a sequel of the previous game's James Bond parody. As you chain stunts together, you'll increase the score multiplier for a better rank, and maybe even an awards nomination. Irreverent but well put together, Stuntman Ignition received decent reviews before quickly fading away. Mad World Mad World, Platinum Games' hack-and-slash beat-em-up for the Wii, was a wild ride. It combined an over-the-top, ultra-violent premise with a graphic style akin to Sin City, as players batted enemies into dartboards or moving trains when not chainsawing them into pieces. For all of its sheer hype and strong reviews, though, Mad World didn't perform all that well. It bombed completely in Japan, with only 3,000 copies sold in its launch week, and averaged only 123,000 units sold in North America. America after five months. Chrome Hounds before Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekido, From Software dabbled in all kinds of different genres. It produced a number of mech games in the Armored Core series, but Chrome Hounds was something altogether more unorthodox. It was more of a simulation with a hefty amount of customization and players could battle online persistently. There's still a traditional campaign and multiple mech classes to select, though. Even with a diehard fanbase to this day, Chrome Hounds failed to sustain wider interest. Killer is dead. Grasshopper Manufacture has achieved quite a bit of fame over the decades, to the point that even its more niche releases like Shadows of the Damned, Killer 7, and more have been acknowledged. However, Killer is Dead is still underappreciated with its crazy mix of combo chaining and transforming gun arms. The overall tone and irreverent art style looked cool, but the game struggled to even cross 23,000 units sold on the PS3 before 2013 closed. Mega Man Legends Mega Man has always been known for its side-scrolling 2D action, but in 1997, Capcom Production Studio 2, led by Kaiji Inafune and Yashinori Kawano, tried something different. Mega Man Legends was a fully 3D experience and incorporated way more action-adventure elements. There were numerous NPCs to talk to, dungeons to explore, and even cutscenes. It was open-world Mega Man before open-world games really took off, and despite decent praise from critics, sales were not very good. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, please hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to switch on the notifications bell icon next to it. That way you'll never miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching.